Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. And we have Trina Felder. And our topic today is mouthing off. We're going to be talking about how your dental products can slowly be killing you and the impact of how your oral health can have such an impact on your whole overall health. And I didn't realize this until a few years ago. And the more I learn about it, the more I'm like, wow, I cannot believe that I didn't know about this earlier. We're going to talk about why is mouthwash bad? Is oil pulling good? and red and blue light therapy, and so much more. So Trina, welcome. Thank you, Chantal. It's so great to mouth off with you. (laughs) Well, let's start with the first uh, area where we can talk about just how is your oral health making such an impact on your overall all health and what kind of got you into this line of work? That's all. Most of those are loaded questions. I love to talk about both of them because most people don't even get the connection. I I remember hearing as a kid, my mom say, or even the dentist say, you know, um, your 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 oral health is the gateway to your health. Without oral health, you know, everything else kind of starts to collapse. And I didn't know what that meant as as a kid. I still didn't know what it meant as an adult until I started getting into oral health and research, and a little bit about my background. I'm, I'm a registered nurse and I always get the question, how did you, a nurse go from that, you know, being a nurse to oral health? I ha- my daughter was born uh, or at the age of two, she had a molar come in that had a natural cavity in it. It had a natural defect. We were brushing her teeth one night and we saw this divot, this discoloration in her tooth. So we took her to the dentist. The dentist took one look at that tooth and he said that I, I love my props. So he said, that little divot is a natural cavity. It developed in utero when that tooth was being developed. So he said, you know, the best thing that we can do since she's two is we'll put a temporary filling in it. And every time the filling falls out, that temporary filling will most likely last two to three months. So every two to three months when that filling falls out, we'll just decide if now's the time to put it, um, to pull the tooth or do we just put another temporary filling in it? And he said, most likely we're going to have to pull the tooth within one year. And so I, I know that every tooth is connected to an organ during development in utero. As an organ is being developed, it's the same time as a, a, a tooth. So there's a meridian, just like the meridians in acupuncture. There's a meridian that's connected from an organ to a tooth. So when you sever that connection then um, it's severed forever. So when he said, we, we might just have to pull a tooth within a year, I was just like, oh my gosh, I don't want to do that. Like she's two. So as I was leaving, he says, don't worry, mom, because he knew I was upset. He said, don't worry, mom. We put a temporary filling in it. Now we just hope for the best. And I thought, oh my gosh, there's no way. This mom is going to hope for the best. So I started doing my research. I found Dr. Weston A. Price I discovered that through his research, he discovered the link between cavities and sugar and diet and dental products and what works to keep teeth healthy and gums healthy. And so I developed my dirty mouth tooth powder and my whole dental line based on his research. And lo and behold, you can heal a cavity. Um, I couldn't heal the cavity that she had because we had put a filling in it. But what I wanted to do was strengthen that tooth and keep that filling as as free from bacteria as possible. My goal was to save that tooth um, for one year. If I could get that tooth one year and one day I did good as a mom. And that tooth, after switching her dental products to something that was going to remineralize her tooth and help us control the bacteria inside her mouth, that tooth lasted, the lifespan of the tooth fell out naturally at the age of 12. And that original filling was still in place with tooth that had actually enamel had grown over that filling to protect that temporary filling from number one falling out and number two bacteria growing underneath it. Never had any problems with that tooth. So um, that's, a, that's a little bit of my background. So I, I developed all of my products based on that situation and the hope for getting that, that tooth past one year and one day. And I, I made it 10 years until the tooth fell out naturally. Um, 
What was, what was the other question that you had asked me originally? Um, just about how the oral it health, impacts it impacts your entire because people think okay if my teeth are good or bad that's fine that's just here in my teeth but they don't realize the impact that your oral health has on your overall health and how it's a huge piece of why your thyroid might might not be functioning why you might have gut issues and all the other trickle down effects that it has. Yes, oral health impacts every aspect of health. In fact, good health starts inside the mouth and that might be where it ends for most people or for some people. And if you if you are someone who suffers from gum disease or you have bleeding gums, inflamed gums, if you have multiple cavities, if you have bad breath, bad breath is the the lowest common denominator of unhealth or or, or being unhealthy inside your mouth and having an increased risk of inflammation and disease internally. Bad breath is not supposed to happen. We are not supposed to have bad breath. We are not born with bad breath. And we, in fact, if you have the right bacteria inside the mouth, you won't have bad breath. Bad breath is an imbalance between the good and the bad bacteria inside the mouth. It means that there's an overgrowth of the harmful bacteria inside the mouth. And Typically, what products do on the market is they try to kill all bacteria. I mean, you've probably seen the green bottles that say kill 99% of bacteria in mouthwashes. And you don't want to kill all bacteria because you need healthy bacteria to keep the bad bacteria at bay, to keep the mouth more alkaline and to promote what your saliva can be doing. Uh, so bad breath is not supposed to happen. It's the first sign that our body's in is out of balance inside the mouth. Um, but dental health or oral health is directly linked to multiple diseases. In fact, it's linked to every disease. Heart disease is the one that most commonly gets um, associated with or oral health. And it's strictly because um, the bad bacteria, the harmful bacteria will do a couple things. It, it increases the inflammation inside the mouth. It wears away at the gum tissue, which means that it's going to weaken the gum tissue. It's going to inflame the gum tissue. There's going to be probably some uh, openings as the junctures between the cells of the of the gum tissue start to widen and become inflamed. Just like leaky gut syndrome, it's called leaky gum syndrome, where things that shouldn't be entering the body are now able to enter into the bloodstream and into the body. And that includes the wrong bacteria, the harmful bacteria, the bacteria that causes cavities and gum disease, the, the same bacteria that's found in, in the mouth has been found in cardiovascular disease in the plaque of the blood vessels of the heart. So that's the direct connection. That inflammation will also cause all sorts of other problems. Uh, Alzheimer's is also directly related. They actually have found the same type of um, markers in the mouth that they have found in the brains of Alzheimer's victims. Um, you know, when you talk about fertility, infertility is a common problem, not just for women, but for men. I want to stay and, one second. I want to I want to stay on the bad breath for just a second because, you know, uh, people who are listening to this call obviously are into intermittent fasting, and I want to mention one thing about bad breath because fasting causes your body to use fat for fuel, which is a good thing. But acetone is a byproduct of fat metabolism. So it increases in your blood and in your breath during fasting. Also, dehydration is a symptom also associated with intermittent fasting. And then that could also cause dry mouth, which is another reason for bad breath. So when you're, when you're doing intermittent fasting, you know, sometimes your lack of like and you can speak to this, but the cells are, the, when, when your, your saliva is not flowing, right? And, then and it's, you, also, it's also with um, fasting is that you're also causing cell turnover to happen faster. So some of the bad cells and things are, you're, you're almost like detoxing. Uh, so yes, there are times when bad breath is justified and it, there is a true cause. Like you're talking about dehydration is one of them. I know a lot of times when I'm speaking, you know, you know this, when you're on podcasts and you're talking for a long time, you start to get dry mouth and yes, you will have bad breath. Same thing with intermittent fasting. If there's a true reason behind it, 
That's one thing. But I'm talking about the bad breath that is con- constant. You're needing to use breath mints, that you're waking up in the morning. And it is also associated with, you know, the bacteria inside the mouth that is causing that imbalance. So you're right. Uh, there are certain reasons that, back, that bad breath might happen and those expected reasons are okay. But I'm talking the long-term overall effects of the bacteria, the acid bacteria causing bad breath. Does that make right. sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. I just wanted to mention that because with fasting, you know, it's great because it's causing your body to use fat for fuel and that's what you want. But acetone is a byproduct of fat metabolism. So it's it's kind of one of those things like you may have some bad breath from doing excessive fasting or if your body's not quite used to it yet and your body will adjust and all of that. But that is, you know, a piece of that as well. So yeah, totally. Um, no, I think I was talking about infertility for men and women, um, but infertility is another problem when with oral health. In fact, not just infertility, but, you know, you take it a little bit further. Once, you know, mom gets pregnant, uh, preterm labor is directly correlated and baby, baby's oral health is directly correlated to the bacteria that's inside mom's mouth. I had a, a friend of mine once that... Um, told me a story about a friend of hers. She was a chiropractor that told me this story. And she says she had a friend that was pregnant. She was about 26, 27 weeks too early for the baby to be born. She went into preterm labor like many women do. And she ended up in the hospital, what we call in Trendelenburg, where her head is down and her legs are up so that the gravity will help hold the baby in. They could not stop contractions. She was on magnesium. And it wasn't until they had a dentist, I think she had a dental appointment and the dentist just came into the, because she was going to be on bed rest for the rest of her pregnancy, came in and he found that she had like an abscessed tooth. She had some sort of infection in her mouth that once he treated it, her preterm labor stopped and she was able to go home. She was discharged home, ended up going home and delivering a full-term baby, but it was her preterm labor was directly caused by something inside her mouth. So it's powerful. And part of the reason that the oral health is um, directly linked like to thyroid, um, to diabetes, you know, obesity, all of that. Part of the reason is because of the nitric oxide pathway and the way we produce nitric oxide in our body. And for those of you who don't know, nitric oxide is the it's a vasodilator. It's a very potent vasodilator. It's um, the component of what is given when patients or people are suffering from a heart attack. You need to increase blood flow. So nitric oxide is one of the medicines that we can put you know, on topical. You can put it under your tongue and it works very quickly to cause the blood vessel to go from being to bigger so you can increase blood flow, increase oxygen. So think about the impact of that, not just with heart health, but with infertility or fertility. You know, you have decreased, you know, decreased blood flow to organs that need blood flow during you know, those important points in life. And nitric oxide, the pathway um, uh, for production, for us to produce our own nitric oxide, in fact, you really do, that, that's really the best way to, is to produce your own nitric oxide. It's very hard to not. It's hard, hard to take any kind of supplement, but it's the bacteria inside the mouth has to be healthy bacteria, healthy bacteria in the gut, and then your saliva. Those three components have to be normal in order for you to have a good nitric oxide production. And um, so, you know, anyone that has digestive problems, uh, leaky gut or SIBO, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. Uh, it's going to be very hard. Anyone that has the wrong bacteria inside the mouth and then your saliva um, has to be flowing freely. It has to be, you know, it has to have the right nutrients and right right substance in it to produce nitric oxide. Um, Without that, then you're going to have, um, like I said, that cardiovascular implications. You can also, and it affects your immune system, totally affects your sleep quality um, and all the other things that I I mentioned. So Nitric oxide, it's really important. Um, getting your gut 
healthy is important. And what a lot of people don't realize is your gut starts inside your mouth. If you are not um, creating an environment inside your mouth for healthy, uh, healthy bacteria, you're swallowing everything inside your mouth. And if all that's inside your mouth is harmful bacteria, you're swallowing that and then feeding and seeding your gut. So a lot of times you can try and heal from digestive disorders, but you'll never completely heal until you heal your, the bacteria inside your mouth. I want to talk about oil pulling for just a second. And actually, my good friend, Mama Z, is the one who taught me how to do oil pulling. I was at her house and I'd heard about oil pulling and I'd, you know, just heard it on different podcasts, but it never resonated with me because nobody ever, I feel like people talk about oil pulling, but they never tell you what to do. So if you've never heard about it like I was, I was at her house one day and she was like, okay, let me teach you what to do. She was like, all right, we're going to take one tablespoon of coconut oil. And she just literally took it out of the jar. She put it in her mouth and she's like, we're going to swish this around in our mouth for 15 to 20 minutes and try not to swallow any of it. So you just literally sit there and go, you know, with your mouth and just swish it around for 20 minutes and then make sure that you spit it out into the trash can once you're done. And you avoid putting it in the sink, obviously, because you don't want that buildup of the oil because that's going to clog up your sinks. And so that's it. Those are the three simple steps. And I remember thinking, you know, I've heard about this so much in podcasts, but no one ever tells you, number one, really why to do it and, and, and how to do it. So I want you to talk about what you use, what, why you do it, and any tips that people can have and kind of do you use coconut oil? Do you use olive oil? Um, and what's kind of your best strategies for that? I should put a different take on oil pulling. Um, okay. I, I, people ask me all the time, is it, do, do you like oil pulling? Is it okay? Can I, st- can I do oil pulling? Should I do oil pulling? My answer is this. The biggest pain point that you mentioned, that you mentioned the biggest pain point with oil pulling is a 20 minute swish. Like you have to do for 20 minutes. If you're not doing it for 20 minutes, you're really not getting the full benefits of oil pulling. And oil pulling, the reason you do it is to help get toxins out of your teeth and gums. It will ultimately whiten your teeth. Maybe some people do it because of that. But really the goal is to pull out toxins and to alkalize or get the right environment, moisten the mouth, keep the kill the bad bacteria and support the good bacteria inside the mouth. But you do really need to do a 20 minute swish on it. And that's the biggest pain point. So what I have told people and whether you do it or you don't, that's up to you. If you want to do oil pulling, if you love doing oil pulling, it's not going to hurt you. It's going to be beneficial for you. But what I discovered is that you can get the same benefit of oil pulling using some just different ingredients. I put together, um, so I have with my dental products, we use um, a blend of three different clays for our paste and our tooth powder. And clay is a really good medium because it's alkaline, but it binds very quickly to toxins. It is a ionic bond. So if you go back to science class, when two things bond together and they're, it's an ionic bond, they're so tight that not, very little will break that. It's going to have to be something big like high heat or something that's going to break that bond. So in your gum tissue, I love all my props, so I'm going to use my little mouth here. In your gum tissue and your teeth, you have um, you, you think about like you're you're exposed to pol- pollutants all day, heavy metals, um, all sorts of things that can get into your gum tissue. And in fact, gums, especially if they're inflamed or bleeding, that's a bigger potential. But even healthy gums will absorb some of those toxins. When you're brushing your teeth with clay, a clay-based toothpaste or tooth powder, the clay is going to be deep cleansing those teeth and the gum tissue and pull pulling those toxins out because it's got such a high affinity for them. So I like to tell people, like, if you really, if you're not going to be consistent with oil pulling and a 20 minutes is a pain point for you, you can get the same benefit by brushing with a clay-based toothpaste or tooth powder. Two minutes of brushing with clay is going to probably pull out more toxins than 20 minutes of, of doing an oil pull. On top of that, if you're getting all the other benefits as well, you're also going to be whitening your teeth, but you're also going to get more benefits. You're going to be 
remineralizing your teeth. You're going to be putting minerals back in your teeth, which is something that coconut oil or any other oil isn't going to have. It doesn't have those minerals in them to be able to put the minerals back in your teeth and make your teeth actually stronger and whiter because of its filling in the enamel. Um, the other thing is um, coconut oil is most widely used because it tastes better. I don't know if you've ever tried swishing or swallowing straight olive oil, but olive oil um, is better. It's, I know it's gross. It's a better medium. It's a, it actually does better than coconut, but it tastes so bad that you can't tolerate swishing it for 20 minutes. But I created um, my, my, my gums, they're called gumdrops, dirty mouth gumdrops, which are um, come in a little bottle and it replaces mouthwash. But after you're done brushing with the clay, then you put a couple drops on your finger of the gumdrops and you just put them right on your gums. And the olive oil uh, will absorb. It's got squalene in it, which is a great component to help rebuild tissue, which is why it's in a lot of face products, but it's great for gum tissue as well. And then it has a blend of 11 essential oils, essential oils that will increase blood flow, reduce inflammation. These are all the things that you need to heal your gum tissue and prevent that inflammation and the leaky gum syndrome. And in my opinion, if you can do something that takes less than, you know, three minutes because the gum drops on top of brushing is probably two minutes and 20 seconds, and you're going to get all the benefits plus more, I think that's a bonus. And I, I just think in our time constraint society, um, less is more. And if you do want to do um, oil pulling, there's no no reason that you can't. I'm not saying don't do it. If you enjoy it and love it, do it. But for most people, they're, they're not going to do it consistently and then they're just not going to do it for 20 minutes so they won't get the benefits. Let's just take a minute and let's talk about my latest discovery. Listen, this is the hottest super nutrient packed product that's going to boost your brain and your overall well-being. First of all, as soon as I tried this product, I became a fan of it and was blown away by the immediate result. I felt focused, my mind was clear, it just doubled my mental performance. So this product has the superpowers of mushroom extracts and collagen. So it has four of the best health boosting mushrooms. It's got lion's mane, chaga, cordyceps, and reishi collagen and Peruvian cacao. So when you combine all of these, the four mushrooms and the collagen, it is going to energize your brain and your body. It's called Kala Genius. So check it out, newtopia.com slash wasteawaygenius and use the code wasteaway10 during checkout. What I'm starting to do is I'm doing it at my office because if you think about it, like what I was doing was like doing it in the morning, first thing, like as a routine. But then the girl that helps it around our house that does all of our cooking and cleaning and stuff like that, like I'd be like, well, and she'd be like asking me questions and then I'd be like writing them down. And then inevitably, like my husband would call or my hus my son would want something. I was like, this is not working. So, you know, there's usually a solid 20 minutes that I have at my desk at work. And if I just bring that to work where I'm like in a concentrated time, it actually helps because I can close my door and kind of tell everyone I'm off limits. And then I can focus on doing something. And that's the time that I can do it. So I think timing with that is everything and finding a time that actually works for you. And it's actually not a bad thing where you can just be in silence and it's like you close the door and it's like, don't bother me. I'm doing my oil pulling right now. Yeah, I love that. I do that with my teeth whitening. I know we wanted to talk about like red and blue light, which might actually be a good time to talk about it. But um, red and blue light is also really good for the mouth. Um, and it's about a 20 minute treatment as well. And that's what I do with my teeth maintenance system. I get behind, you know, I get to my office and I'll sit down and answering emails because you're, you're right. When you put something inside your mouth, whether it's the coconut oil for oil pulling or a mouthpiece that is going to be doing a treatment, the only thing you can't do is eat, drink and talk. So 
Oh, you know, if you're at home, that's when the kids are going to misbehave. That's when everything's going to happen. The phone's going to ring. Someone's going to get the doorbell, all that stuff. So I tend to do it when I'm at my desk as well. But when, you know, we're talking about oral health, one of the newest uh, things that, you, you know, w- most people don't even realize it's available is using red and blue LED light. Of course, it has to be set at the right wavelengths for the mouth and the oral tissues. But it's something that we haven't used in the past that when I talk to some of the biological dentists that I know, when their clients are using red and blue light inside the mouth, it's a game changer. It's a game changer. Speeds healing. Red light. I'll I'll show you the little device. It's always so much easier when people can see. So there's blue light, there's red light, and then a combination of blue and red. This one's hard to see. But this mouthpiece with the gel that I created that's peroxide free, you, you put that inside your mouth for 20 minutes. The red light is going to do the same thing red light does for skin health and wound care. You think about gum tissue and even if you're someone who has healthy gums, you want to keep your gums healthy. It's easier to keep them healthy than it is to kind of rehab them back to being healthy. If you have receding gums, yes, they can be healed. You can regrow gum tissue. It's just harder and it takes longer. But the environment has to be sustainable for healthy gum tissue. If you continuously are eating acidic foods, continuously eating sugar and um, have the wrong bacteria inside your mouth, you will never regrow your gum tissue. This is where I get in the argument with dental hygienists all the time. They're very vocal on my social media because they want to point out that no, you can't heal cavities and no, you can't regrow gum tissue. Stop telling people that. And I said, well, you are 100% right and you're 100% wrong. You're right in the fact that if you keep using, you know, the wrong products, if you keep using the C products and the mouthwash and all those acid producing products, you will never regrow gum tissue and you will never heal a cavity. But if you make a couple switches, darn right, you can heal a cavity and you can regrow gums. I've seen it happen for multiple, numerous customers of mine. So the red light therapy is going to increase blood flow and reduce inflammation and also stimulate collagen production, which is extremely important, not just for gum tissue health, but for the bone underneath your jawbone, which if periodontal disease gets too deep, it affects the bone tissue and then you really have some problems. Um, So, and the nice thing about light therapy for most people, if they don't know this, is that it doesn't just hit the surface of, of the tissue and bounce it penetrates into the tissue. So think about the teeth, like getting between the teeth and into the pockets of the gum. Depending on the depth, um, you, the, the light therapy, the light will actually penetrate uh, deeper into the tissue and actually be able to help support health between the gums or between the teeth and, and the gum pockets. Blue light is interesting. I love the blue light. Uh, Harvard did a study And they tested blue light on the pathogens inside the mouth, the different bacteria that cause cavities and gum disease. What they discovered is that when exposed to blue light, there's this little thing inside the bacteria that explodes. And when that thing explodes, the bacteria dies, which I just, when I put this in my mouth, I just envision all these bacteria just exploding. I'm like, this is kind of gross, but they're just exploding inside my mouth, which is really cool because think about um, where the, these these um, bacteria breed and hide like bet- between the teeth, like I was talking about, in the gum pocket and anywhere on your tongue, on the tissues of your mouth, the, the plaque that develops on the teeth, that filming, that coating, all of that is the wrong bacteria, the harmful bacteria. And if you expose that bacteria to blue light and it explodes, guess what happens? It's gone. When you spit it out, it's gone. Even if you swallow it, it's dead. It's gone. And now your teeth can appear whiter just by nature of getting rid of that bacteria because that bacteria itself has a yellow color to it. So if you've ever seen plaque, it kind of looks yellow. It looks dingy and it looks gross. And if you're killing the bacteria, you're getting rid of the plaque because that's what that is. And your teeth will ultimately look whiter just by getting rid of the bacteria. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, saliva production because, you know, I think that 
our saliva plays a really important role in protecting our mouth and decreasing bacterial growth. And when people fast, actually your saliva flow is reduced. And so if your saliva flow is reduced, then you have less protection against, you know, all the oral bacteria that can cause back bad breath and all of that. So I want you to talk about anything that helps since, you know, we're such a proponent of fasting and I want to continue fasting. But if we want to increase our saliva, we know that oil pulling is one of those techniques that actually um, can help with that. Anything else that can help produce saliva in your mouth since we know that the saliva flow is reduced because of fasting? Fasting shouldn't impact it to the extent where it's impacting your health because especially with intermittent fasting, it's a certain period of time and you should not dehydrate to the point where your saliva is truly affected. Um, if you are, then you probably need to increase your fluids. You don't want to be dehydrated. You want to keep your hydration status up because that will also dehydration impacts everything else. It impacts your muscle, impacts your, um, your um, brain health and heart health and all that other stuff. So um, as far as saliva, you, you might tend to feel like when you're fasting, your, your mouth is drier, but there's an end game in sight for you as soon as you start eating again, you're going to start producing more saliva. Part of the, you know, the idea behind saliva is, as you know, it's Pavlov's dog. The minute you start thinking about food, you start salivating. So even thinking about food, as much as you don't want to think about food when you're fasting, thinking about if you have a dry mouth, then it might, thinking about food might ask, actually increase the saliva production. But primarily making sure that you're staying hydrated is probably going to be one of the most um, important things. One of the other things is uh, when you're fasting, you're not doing the naughty things. So you're not really causing an increase in the bad bacteria because you're not really eating the sugar and, and the, the things, the processed foods and the things that can contribute to the growth of the bacteria. So I don't really think that intermittent fasting ultimately is going to be the make it or break it of oral health. I think it's everything that surrounds the intermittent fasting that you're doing, the products that you're using, the food that you're not fasting on, you know, making sure that that's healthy, healthy food, you know, real raw food and organic um, meats and things like that. Uh, and then just making sure that your dental products are going to support you because unfortunately the dental products on the market aren't supporting us. They're not doing what they're supposed to be doing to keep us healthy. They're actually creating the, an environment inside the mouth where you end up with cavities and disease. I tend to be the proponent of the, per, the person who says, um, you know, what you're buying and what they're selling you, those are two different things, two different things. If you know how to read an ingredient list and you know what to look for, you'll be able to tell if what they're selling you is really what you're buying. And what I mean by that is when you pick up a toothpaste tube and you see sodium lauryl sulfate, you see fluoride, you see triclosan, you see artificial this, artificial that, um, all of these things that really aren't natural, what they're really selling you. They're, they're selling you that you're going to get a teeth whitening, you're going to have less cavities, you're, you know, you're going to have a white smile. What you're really buying is cavities, gum disease, and yellow teeth unfortunately. And then you're also buying, if you go further down the road, heart disease, diabetes, infertility, preterm labor, Alzheimer's, and thyroid disease, all the inflammatory problems that happen down the road. You know, when you look at a product that is formulated correctly, it really should do three things for oral care because, and really, to be honest with you, I tell people the reason that you brush your teeth is not to clean them. We've been brainwashed into believing you need to like scrub your mouth clean and uh, sterilize it. But really your, your saliva is supposed to do that. It's, a, it's supposed to clean your mouth. The reason that we brush our teeth is for three things. You want to put the minerals back in your teeth. You can put the minerals back in your teeth that you're losing on a daily basis. You will have strong enamel that will be cavity free or 
cavity resistant. You want to make sure that it's alkaline. An alkaline dental product will kill bacteria that needs an acidic environment to grow. So easily easy, easy fix. It's a super, super easy switch of product type. And then the third thing, and, and so basically those two components, the alkaline and the, and the mineral, um, I tell people look for baking soda. Baking soda will signify that your product is, in, is indeed alkaline and clay-based with also a blend of hydroxyapatite. That's what we do with our uh, dirty mouth tooth powder and toothpaste. We blend three clays with hydroxyapatite. That is going to be the minerals. Those are going to be the minerals, the calcium, the phosphate, and all the other blends of minerals that are on your teeth. Blended with baking soda makes it alkaline so the minerals can get back in your teeth. And then the, four, the third component is that it has to pull toxins from your tissues, detox them out. The clay will do that. Clay will pull the toxins. So um, that's why it's important to make sure you have a clay based with um, baking soda. And that will support the oral health. And then making sure you're not following that up with a mouthwash. I, I usually tend to err on the side of um, what I see out there. And probably 97 to 98% of the mouthwashes are not good for you. Um, if you don't know what you're looking for in a mouthwash, it can do more harm than good. So I tend to tell people steer away from it. If you're using the right dental products, you don't need a mouthwash because your mouth will be fresh. The good bacteria is going to support a healthy bacteria, a healthy mouth. Um, the gumdrops that I created is meant to replace the mouthwash and it supports your gum tissue. It supports the bacteria, reduces inflammation and all that good stuff that you want. So is there any mouthwash that is okay? Like, is there any that you would say this is an okay mouthwash or no? Would you say all mouthwashes are bad? Well, there's probably, there are some brands that are good. Um, and for as far as names, I don't, I just can't come up with them right now because I get asked um, periodically and 90, like I said, like 97, 98% of the brands that I've looked at are formulated with alcohol peroxide. I mean, if you see alcohol and peroxide, uh, that's a that's a dead giveaway that you don't want that. That Both of those ingredients are going to destroy your good bacteria. They're not good for your gum tissue. I mean, think about putting alcohol on an open wound. What does that feel like? Uh, same thing with peroxide. It, it's, not, it, it's not good for your tissues. It's not good for your microbiome. Uh, triclosan, artificial anything, not good. Um, you know, you still want to look for something that's going to be alkaline. So I would still say something that has like a baking soda or something that's going to be alkaline. And for the average consumer, most of us don't know what those ingredients are. So, um, you know, if the packaging says it's alkaline, but you want to make sure it doesn't have those other ingredients, sometimes they'll put stuff in something to say, be able to say, oh, it's alkaline. But then you've got alcohol that's destroying all the good that that little bit of the good ingredient is doing. Um, that's why I say it's really hard. Um, and I, you know, if you're really brushing with something that's healthy, that's actually doing what it's supposed to be doing, you, you really don't need mouthwash. You don't need breath mints. You don't need gum because your mouth is healthy. Um, and most of those things are just formulated to support the wrong bacteria, the wrong environment inside the mouth. Yeah. And, and when, you know, some of you, the listeners that are listening to this, you know, I don't think that they realize that dehydration, I want to just reiterate that again, because dehydration really can cause bad breath. And if you're keeping yourself hydrated, um, and a lot of times people are fasting, they're like, okay, I'm hungry, I'm going to use caffeine, um, you know, to help me to fast longer. So if you're having too much caffeinated drinks, like tea and coffee, they have a diuretic effect as well and can get you dehydrated. And then if you're drinking, having too high levels of your salt or sugar, you know, these, I hate these sugary drinks that they say, you know, like my son, they, they try to give them Gatorade and all this other nonsense, you know, when at the baseball fields that they want. And while sugary drinks might be refreshing at first, they actually can be very dehydrating. So it's, you know, they, it's all lies. But um, I think that I just wanted to mention that to our fasting friends because I think that's super important. So let's talk real quick about 
some of your favorite products that you have um, that I that you would say like here's my top three favorite products that can really help people with their um, mouth health. And well, I made it super simple for you. And actually, the links that you'll have will give your listeners, if they're interested, the best price I know for the teeth whitening. So this is probably my favorite because it is the game changer. It's going to help whiten the teeth, but in the long run, but doing it correctly, it's going to help rebuild the enamel of the teeth, which is thick and white or should be thick and white. And that is what is going to maintain health, not just of your tooth, but overall health. Um, so th- um, with the with the link that I'll give you, they can save 60% off the teeth whitening system. And the gel is really easy and, and it's peroxide free and it's made, formulated the same way as my de- other dental products. So it's formulated to be alkaline and it has minerals in it. So while the gel is actually sitting on your teeth for 20 minutes, you're actually replacing the minerals inside your teeth. Um, strengthening them, whitening them and everything. So this is probably my favorite because it is the game changer with both the red and the blue LED light. And then the other one that I put together is uh, because I used to get people asking me all the time, what do I start with? Can you just tell me what I need to get to start? So I just made a kit It's called the dental detox box or dental detox kit has everything that's needed for a 60 day supply of um, the things that I talked about as a morning and nighttime tooth powder. I always start people with powder instead of my paste because the powder is more concentrated. Anytime you can do powder over paste, it, you know, when you think about paste, it's just the powder with, the, with water or some liquid added. So I always start with the, the powder so that we can get rid of the plaque, get rid of the bad bacteria and start rebalancing with a good bacteria, rebuilding the enamel, I've had people that have had sensitive teeth for years and years and years say, say within two days, their sensitivity was gone. They were shocked. Um, so the tooth powder is a morning and a nighttime. The only difference is the nighttime has charcoal added to our blend. Still has the same blend, just a little bit of charcoal for more detoxification and a little bit more whitening power. Um, I know this is blurry on the screen. It's because it's focusing on me, but um, it has a bamboo toothbrush. Um, it has activated charcoal in the bristles. And then our floss picks are biodegradable and um, they are made of cornstarch. And then finally, uh, oh, the gumdrops, that's the bottle of gumdrops that you'll use instead of mouthwash. And then a copper tongue scraper. That's the one thing we didn't talk about. But if you, if you don't scrape your tongue, uh, you're missing a, a big chunk of real estate in the mouth where the bacteria actually grows and creates acid. So anytime you have the wrong bacteria inside the mouth, it is creating its own environment. It's just like cancer cells. You know, we talk about cancer cells. One of the things that people on can- with cancer will do is um, eat an alkaline diet because the alkalinity will actually kill cancer cells. Same thing inside the mouth. The mouth is no different. The bad bacteria creates, creates its own acid on your tongue so that it can keep growing more bad bacteria. And that's part of the reason that you end up with the bad breath and then food doesn't taste as good and all that other stuff. So scraping that bacteria, that's that white coating on your tongue, scraping that morning and night takes about five seconds and it will help um, progress, make things change quicker inside the mouth and help get eliminate those um, bacteria from just growing on your tongue, which is really gross anyway. Food will taste better too. The tongue scraper, I feel like I need to get into the habit. I do it probably like two or three times a week, but I really need to do it every single day because I feel like it literally is a game changer now that I've learned to use that and I just need to go back to using it every single day. Well, this has been amazing and we will put all of the links in the show notes. You guys need to go there. The products are amazing. And you guys stay tuned. We've got another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now.